deep under the scorching Libyan desert lies an ancient reservoir holding water that dates back 38,000 years. Engineers embarked on the Great Man-Made River Project, an ambitious mission to tap into this hidden treasure. They designed an intricate network of pipelines, each massive concrete pipe weighing several tons and stretching over 2,800 kilometers. Transporting these colossal pipes across a desert where temperatures soared to 50 degrees Celsius was no small feat. Workers laid them in precise sections, buried them to protect them from the relentless heat, and used powerful pumps to push the water uphill while gravity carried it down. Giant reservoirs like Ajdabia held millions of cubic meters of this precious resource. Despite these Herculean efforts, political chaos and conflict turned this ambitious project into a tumultuous saga. What derailed such a grand engineering marvel? And what does it mean for Libya's future? Libya, one of the driest countries on Earth, has always faced an uphill battle for water. With no natural rivers to rely on, the Libyan people have had to depend on scarce groundwater aquifers just to survive in this harsh, arid landscape. But then, in 1953, something remarkable happened. While searching for oil in the vast southern deserts, geologists stumbled upon a hidden treasure, ancient fossil water buried deep beneath the sand. This wasn't just any water, it was millions of cubic meters of fresh, potable water stored away like nature's secret stash. Suddenly, the idea of turning this desert into a land of flowing water didn't seem so far-fetched. By 1969, a new government saw the potential in these underground reservoirs and embarked on a bold vision to create a man-made river that could bring this precious water to the thirsty coastal cities and remote desert communities. This is how the Great Man-Made River Project was born, a plan to connect multiple underground basins with a vast network of pipelines, creating a sustainable water source for the entire nation. Now, let's take a quick tour of where all this water is coming from. Imagine looking at a map of Libya, starting down near the Egyptian border. Here lies the massive Kufra Basin, a water reservoir so large it covers an area of 350,000 square kilometers. That's like taking the entire state of Montana and filling it with water up to 2,000 meters deep. Next, if you move a little to the northwest, you'll find the Sirti Basin. This one holds more than 10,000 square kilometers of water, buried 600 meters below the desert. Then, there's the Merzuk Basin, southwest of Sirte, stretching over 450,000 square kilometers and holding another 4,800 square kilometers of water. Finally, we have the Hamada and Kufra Basins, which extend from the Kargoff Arch to the Jabal Sauda, all the way to the coast. If you're scratching your head trying to imagine all this, just think of these basins as giant underground lakes. Now the challenge was how to connect them all with a man-made river. If you look at a map, you'd see these four sites spread out like points on a treasure map, each one a crucial piece in the puzzle. The idea was to build a network of pipelines that could link them together and transport this ancient water to where it was needed most. So how exactly did they pull off this engineering marvel? And what hurdles did they face along the way? The first step was identifying and mapping the underground water sources. These aquifers, massive underground reservoirs, held fossil water collected between 14,000 and 38,000 years ago. The largest of these, the Kufra Basin, spanned an area of 350,000 square kilometers. Engineers had to drill deep wells, some reaching depths of 600 meters, to access this water. But drilling was just the beginning. Transporting the water from these deep wells to where it was needed involved an extensive network of pipelines. The main pipelines alone stretched over 2,800 kilometers to cover the distance from New York to Los Angeles. These pipes were not your average plumbing. Each concrete pipe was about 4 meters in diameter, large enough to drive a car through, and weighed several tons. 
They had to be manufactured on site in giant plants to ensure they were strong enough to withstand the immense pressure of the water they carried. One of the first major engineering challenges was dealing with the desert's harsh conditions. Temperatures in the Libyan desert can soar to over 50 degrees Celsius. This extreme heat posed a threat to both the workers and the materials. To combat this, construction was often carried out at night or in the early morning hours where temperatures were lower. Additionally, special coatings were applied to the pikes to protect them from the intense heat and protect them from expanding and contracting, which could cause cracks and leaks. The next challenge was the sheer distance and the logistics of laying such a vast network of pipelines. This required meticulous planning and coordination. The pipelines had to be laid in sections, with each section carefully aligned and connected to ensure there were no leaks. Given the vast distances, pumping stations were strategically placed along the pipeline to maintain water pressure and ensure a steady flow. These stations were engineering marbles in themselves, equipped with powerful pumps capable of moving millions of liters of water daily. One of the standout features of this project was the Brega pipe plant, which produced the concrete pipes used in the network. This plant was a colossal undertaking, producing pipes at an astonishing rate to keep up with the construction schedule. The pipes were then transported across the desert, often on specially designed trucks that could handle the rough terrain and immense weight. Each section of the pipeline had to be precisely positioned and buried to protect it from environmental damage and sabotage. As the pipelines snaked their way across the desert, engineers faced another major hurdle crossing the vast expanses of shifting sands and rocky terrain. This required building aqueducts and bridges in some areas, while in others, they had to dig deep trenches to lay the pipe securely. The shifting sands of the desert meant that the pipeline route had to be continuously monitored and adjusted to prevent sections from becoming buried or exposed. To bring water from the southern aquifers to the northern coastal cities, the engineers had to overcome significant elevation changes. The desert landscape is not flat. It has hills, valleys, and plateaus. This meant that the water had to be pumped uphill in some sections and allowed to flow downhill in others. To manage this, engineers designed a system of gravity-fed and pumped sections. In gravity-fed sections, the natural slope of the land was used to move the water, reducing the need for pumping and saving energy. In pumped sections, powerful pumps were used to push the water uphill, ensuring it could reach even the highest elevations. One of the most impressive engineering achievements of the project was the creation of massive reservoirs to store and distribute the water. These reservoirs, such as the Ajdabia and Grand Omar Mukhtar reservoirs, were strategically located to serve as central distribution points. They were designed to hold millions of cubic meters of water, ensuring a steady supply even during periods of high demand. Building these reservoirs required excavating millions of cubic meters of earth and constructing massive concrete structures to hold the water securely. Another crucial aspect of the project was ensuring the quality and safety of the water. The ancient fossil water, while abundant, had to be treated to meet modern safety standards. This required setting up treatment plants along the pipeline network. These plants were equipped with advanced filtration and purification systems to remove any impurities and ensure the water was safe for drinking and agricultural use. Engineers also had to continuously monitor the water quality using sensors and testing stations along the pipeline to detect any issues and address them promptly. Despite the many technical and engineering challenges, the Great Man-Made River Project made significant progress over the years. By 1989, the project delivered its first water to the Ajdabiya Reservoir, marking a major milestone. The water flowed steadily from the desert aquifers to the coastal cities, providing much-needed relief to millions of Libyans. Subsequent phases of the project expanded the network further, reaching more cities and communities. So let me know. What lies ahead for this remarkable project? Will it reach its full potential or will new challenges emerge? The story of the great man-made river is far from over and its future remains as fascinating as its past. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment with your thoughts. 
Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss out on our latest content.